Welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader, and we've got more mint on card vintage Star Wars items that sold at auction for the most part. There were a few buy it nows and best offer accepted for some of these, but uh, as you can see by this thumbnail, there was a beautiful Palatoy with the Clipper offer sticker on there. Uh, a lot of four droid mint on card figures sold what I thought was a pretty great price, but in general, there were some items that fell under the radar that I missed in a few of my searches, and we're going to start off with those. Uh, here are some 12 and 20 backs that this seller had that I somehow missed. I don't know how I missed these, but uh, in my various searches, I did not see them pop up, or I would have probably included them in a what to buy video, and the first one is this 12 back C C-3PO. And this one sold for $401, pretty great price overall. Uh, there was some wear to the hang tab on the back of the card on the right-hand side, but for the rest of the card and the blister and everything, it looked pretty good. I would say this is probably easily a 75 grade at a minimum. And $401, you can't beat that price. Uh, next up, he did have a 12-back Darth Vader. This one was in a little rougher condition. You can see something going on with the blister there. Potentially, it was a resale. I don't know. I didn't look at the the description for this auction very closely. And, of course, heavy wear at the top of the card there. But, nevertheless, that still sold for $1,275. So, this one maybe uh, did not fall under the radar. And uh, I would say that, to me, I, I wouldn't pay that for uh, an item like this that is in pretty rough condition. But, you know, 12-back Vaders are pretty expensive. In, in near-mint condition, they can go for $2,500 or more. Uh, but this one did sell for $12.75. Uh, next up was a Luke Skywalker on a 12-back. This one sold for $960. And again, this one looked to be in pretty rough shape with the blister condition there at the bottom of the card. Some crunching going on there. But uh, it still got a bid of $960 that won that auction. Uh, next up, he had an AFA-80 Princess Leia on a 20-back offerless. This one was a punched example with no price sticker. That one sold for $14.79. Uh, that's a price that I'd be willing to pay all day long, I think. That, that was a pretty pretty great-looking Leia. You can see the subscores there, 80, 85, 80 for that 20-back A Princess Leia. So that, that, to me, is right in line with market and a, and a very fair price, just given what it is. Uh, he also had an AFA 75. 12 back B R2 D2 75 80 and 80 were the sub scores on that one. That one did have a price sticker on there and it was a punched example, but 740 bucks. I mean, that's a pretty good deal if you ask me for uh he labeled it a 12 yeah, it was a 12 back B. So, I mean, to me 740 pretty great price if you can live with, you know, a 75 grade and the and the big price sticker on the right-hand side, but uh that's one of the least expensive 12 backs I've seen for R2-D2 in a while. Uh, some yellowing on the sticker as well for that figure. Uh, next up, some blurry photos there to start, but this was a 12 back Stormtrooper. And uh, this is a little bit better angle here. Uh, this one had no price sticker, and again, it was punched, but a little bit of yellowing going on on the legs there for the Stormtrooper inside the blister. But this is a long play logo Kenner. 12 back and that one sold for $625 so that one probably I think I guess that's probably pretty fair you can see the yellowing on that leg there pretty heavily so uh probably at best a 75 just given the figure score on that one but uh, pretty great price there uh next up was a 31 back B Princess Leia in her Bespin gown very slight yellowing to the blister it looks like and it did have some uh sticker residue and a little bit of leftover price sticker there on that one uh, but this one was a punched example, and I, I believe the debut card for it might have been the 31A that was the debut card. This was the 31B apparently, but uh, that one sold for 360 pounds over in the UK, which is 462 dollars, another pretty great price. And uh, here was an interesting one. I think I had this in a what to buy video. This was the 32 back Boba Fett. It was only graded AFA 30. The card got a 20. Uh, the blister got a 75, figure got a 60. So apparently these Boba Fetts are known to discolor pretty heavily on the 32 backs. And it obviously had that pretty heavy uh, litho damage in the upper right-hand corner from where the price sticker was attempted to be removed. you got to leave those price stickers on unless you know what you're doing there. But that still sold for $1,211 free shipping on 30 bids. That one closed on July 20th. So even in low grades for the 32 back, 
ESB Boba Fett mint on card. Uh, that one still come in at a pretty significant price, w well higher than what I expected. I was thinking probably eight or nine hundred bucks, but uh, twelve hundred and eleven dollars took that one home. Uh, next up was that CAS seventy plus Canadian thirty two back Luke Skywalker farm boy, and uh, another one I had in my what to buy video. That one sold for nine hundred dollars. And uh, that's probably kind of in line with what I expected. Not too far off anyway. Uh, you know, it was only, again, a 70-plus grade, but it's a foreign variant. And uh, Kenner Canada, the 70, 85, 85. So two high subscores for that Luke Farm Boy mint on card Canadian example. Uh, next up was a 32-back Lando Calrissian unpunched and a crystal clear blister. It did have one ding in the upper left-hand corner of the blister there, but... Uh, and there was some kind of light creases in the lower right-hand corner, some light edge wear here and there. Probably a 75 grade would be my guess on that one. That one sold for $393 on 14 bids. That one closed on July 23rd, but a pretty good example there of Lando. Uh, next up was a 75-plus grade 41 back E C-3PO. So it was right around here when they were switching over. I think it was maybe the 47 backs when they switched over to the removable limbs. Uh, C-3PO, don't quote me on that, but uh, this this 41 back C-3PO first 12, it was unpunched, excuse me, punched with a price sticker on there, and again, graded AFA 75 plus, that one sold for $578, clear blister, and then here was an eight uh, at at driver, Empire Strikes Back card, the 41 back D, it did have some litho damage again in the upper right where the price sticker was attempted to be removed carefully, but still left some litho damage, and uh, it looks like it's a clear blister to me, hard to tell, but maybe some very slight yellowing, if, if any at all. But to me, it looks like a clear blister, but a nice offerless at at driver uh, on the Empire Strikes Back card, unpunched. And that one sold for $500, so uh, pretty good price there, I think, for a Unitoys 41 back D at at driver. Uh, here was a gem. This was the IG88 clear blister 41 back A survival kit offer. It did have a uh, Gamble's price sticker there of two ninety eight, but uh, crystal clear blister in great shape. Card back was in good shape. There was very faint uh, kind of creases there by the hang tab, but uh, kind of partially unpunched there. And uh, here's a close up of the blister. Really great shape for for an ESB IG eighty eight and clear blister IG eighty eights always command pretty good money. This one sold for four thirty five, which I thought was a pretty good buy. Uh, I was expecting maybe a little higher for that, but for a buy it now situation. And for that blister to be in the shape it's in, I thought that was a really great price. Uh, next up was an AFA 75 41 back B 21B medical droid. Uh, it looks like it's maybe got some yellowing to the blister now. Uh, it was labeled as a clear blister, but you can see there maybe just some faint yellowing going on. But uh, archival case 75, 85, 85 were the subscores on that one. But uh, a pretty great example. Now I had a 45 back ESB. 21B. Mine, I believe, was a punched example, and I sold mine. It was a CAS 75 plus that I sold for 515 shipped, if memory served, maybe 510 shipped, and uh, this one sold for 534 plus shipping, so almost 550 for that one. So the, the, mine, I feel like mine was a pretty fair price, just given that you didn't have to pay any eBay sales taxes, uh, you know, state sales taxes on it. Uh, I sold mine on uh, on Rogue Five Toys to help pay for some other items I've got on my radar, but uh, this one did sell again for five thirty four plus eleven forty five shipping. Uh, here is that Rebel Commando. This was the Clipper Return of the Jedi sixty five back. So you can see that uh, free kind of offer sticker there, uh, Dutch Clipper sticker, and the blister was in great shape. It's got the double stem blister. It was slightly yellowed, but uh, it did have some light light creases on the left hand side of the card back. But uh, pretty great foreign item, and it's got the Clipper uh, offer sticker on the back of the card as well. So. Pretty unique. Uh, you don't see these pop up too often for sale. This was over in Europe. Uh, let's see. This was in Germany, and uh, it was listed for 440 euros. Best offer accepted. I tried to look it up to see what the best offer that was accepted on 130point.com, but this one was not popping up, unfortunately. But uh, 440 euros was the list price, which equates to 489 US dollars. Uh, next up was that beautiful Top Toys Argentinian Stormtrooper. And it was graded CAS 75 plus. Here's the back of the card. Very unique card back there. They never did release Lando on the Top Toys cards. These were made in the Top Toys factory. So they were factory specific molds. They did not have any foot pegs inside. 
the most expensive are the Yoda and the Luke Jedi. Uh, the Logre and the Chief Chirpa and the Stormtrooper and Vader are the most common figures. Uh, and so the Stormtrooper is pretty common, but this one did grade a, 70, a 75 plus with CAS and it sold for $840. That went a little bit higher than I expected. I think in the what to buy video, I said it was going to sell for around $750 or $800. So it did go a little bit higher than I expected, but not too far off. I was pretty close for once. Uh, next up was an Adat driver on the Kenner 79 back. I was surprised by this sales price. It was yellow blister. And I've got this one on a clear blister. I think it's a 79 back. Don't quote me on that. But this one was unpunched. And certainly the card was in excellent condition. But it was a yellow uh, blister on that one. And that one sold for 415 pounds, which is 533 U.S. dollars. So that one went a little higher than I would have expected. I think in an auction, you could probably expect that one to go a little bit cheaper. But uh, that one did sell for 533 U.S. dollars. Uh, next up, uh, I've got some Power of the Force that sold, uh, all mint on card. Uh, this one was a little rough, but this is a, a pretty hard to find one. You can see some weird scratches or something going on near the name pill for Luke Skywalker in his X-Wing gear. Lots of creases on the card. But it still sold for four hundred and twenty U.S. dollars in an auction, thirty-nine bids. So lots of action on this one. That one closed on July twenty-third. Uh, High-grade examples can set you back double pretty easily, eight hundred dollars plus. So probably appropriately discounted, but it did have quite a bit of wear to the card. Uh, next up was an AFA eighty-five emperor on the power of the force card another very expensive one even heavily yellowed like this one was and it was unpunched no price sticker it was listed for 700 us dollars and the best offer that was accepted was 630 us dollars so got to be careful on these though when, when they have heavily yellowed blisters like this on the power of the force card uh, they often can crack in shipping so hopefully that one arrives safe and sound but it was certainly a beautiful example of the power of the force 92 back but uh, I, I just always worry about those blisters cracking because they are extremely fragile once they get that heavily yellowed. But uh, that one, again, did sell for $630. Uh, next up is always a desirable Last 17 Luke Skywalker in his Stormtrooper disguise. This was an unpunched example with fairly moderate yellowing. And I thought this price was pretty fair. It was listed for $1,250. Uh, the best offer that was accepted was $1,100. US dollars. Now, AFA 85s, I mean, we've seen as high recently as $2,800 to $3,000 or more. Uh, oh, I take it back. Never mind. This one had a, a proof of purchase cut out on the back. So that's why it went so cheap. Uh, I, to me, I, I'm not paying this for a, a proof of purchase cut out. But, you know, it's probably, let's call it 50% off, you know, if not more. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, if you're willing to live with that defect on the back of the card, and this one displays really nicely from the front anyway. I mean, look how clean that looks from the front. But I did not see that the proof of purchase was cut out. The seller was kind enough to show that, but I just hadn't done my homework yet when I pulled this up for the video. So that one did have the pop cut out, uh, very, very carefully shaved. And, uh, you know, I guess, you know, if, if you want to have a Luke Stormtrooper mint on card and you don't want to pay three grand for it, uh, this is a pretty good deal. So $1,100 took that one home. Uh, next up, this is that one I had in my what to buy video, Clear Blister EV-99. So hard to find these Power of the Force figures with a clear blister. And this one was graded CAS 80 with a 90 sub score for the bubble. And again, it was a clear blister. Look how awesome that looks. It looks factory fresh, straight off the Toys R Us shelves, off the peg there. And that one uh, was unpegged, actually. So this was an unpunched example with the big Toys R Us price sticker. But look how clear that blister is. And that one sold in an auction for $728. I mean, given that an AFA loose graded example can set you back pretty close to that, if not at that price, I think that was a great price for a clear blister, CAS 80 clear blister. Wow, what a, what a deal on that one. Uh, next up is that lot of four droids mint on cards. Let's see, we had Jan Tosh, Jord Dusat, Kia Mall, and Thal Jobin. All of them had yellowed blisters, but were in pretty great shape. All of them unpunched. And uh, look how good, good they looked. I mean, they were in really great shape overall. And it was listed for $1,400, uh, but the best offer that was accepted on these was $1,100, $1,099 to be exact, plus $1,499 shipping. So somebody got a, I think that's a pretty fair price. So let's see, $1,100 for four mocks. That's about, you know, that's a little under uh, $400 a mock. So maybe not the best deal. I don't know. But it's, it seems pretty fair just given that all four of these look to be in near mint minus or near mint plus condition. So, again, 1099 took that home. 
Finally was just Fal Jobin by himself, and this one was an AFA 80, unpunched example, very heavily yellowed blister. And that one sold for $410 plus $899 shipping. So, you know, if you extrapolate, let's call it $325 or so for Thal Jobin, ungraded, which is what this one's probably about the same grade, maybe a little bit less. It looks like it's got a little ding in the upper left-hand corner by the ages four and up. Uh, the rest of these, all, I mean, I thought they all looked pretty good. So uh, I, I think it's probably at market value, I, I guess, uh, just looking, thinking it through and trying to back in to what that AFA, what was that, AFA 80? AFA 80 sold for 410 So let's call that 300 to 325 ungraded. The rest of these all in pretty similar condition. And uh, those, again, sold for 1099 So probably about market value, if I had to guess. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this look at some recent sales for vintage mint-on-card items. Uh, some pretty good deals and some that went a little higher than I expected. But overall, there are some good finds out there if you're looking. I mean, a lot of these uh, fell underneath my radar in my eBay searches. So you got to really broaden the net, so to speak, uh, when you're looking at uh, you know auctions right now for mint-on-card vintage action figures. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.